Let's walk through this. If an IEP team member has been assigned as the LEA, but then signs in the primary role rather than LEA, yet the notes list both roles as the IEP legal? It's a very good question. And let me say it this way. Um, first of all, there are three, four absolute must be present at your IEP meetings, okay? That's you, the parent. Second, the special education uh, teacher, general education teacher. It doesn't matter how severe a child is, he must have a general educator there, all right? Because the entire goal of the IDEA and special education is move your child toward not even needing an IEP, and that is the general education curriculum. That is the general education environment, and that's who has an expertise in understanding those things, is a general education teacher. Even though most general education teachers sit there like a bump on a log, don't participate, don't feel like they have any input, uh, it's ridiculous, but that is a creation of a principal, a special education director, and a failure by that system to educate their general educators as to their partnership and their role in IEPs. Okay, but it's parent, special education teacher, general education teacher, and an LEA. An LEA is a local education agent. That is the leader, the person in charge um, administratively, um, meaning that they've been designated with that role. Now, there's a very specific definition of what an LEA is. It must be somebody that has uh, full knowledge of the available resources of, of um uh, schools, therapy, uh, professionals uh, uh, in in your not only in your school system but also in the geographic boundaries of your school system. So they must have knowledge. And then the second thing is that they've got to have and they've got to be equipped with the authority to commit the resources of the school district on behalf of the child. And if that person doesn't have a good enough knowledge about your school system, the resources, or in your community, and if they don't have the authority to commit the resources, then you don't have an LEA. You have somebody that sort of is pretending to be one, and quite frankly, that is 90% of IEP meetings if you have a principal there, because the principal sure as hell does not have the authority to commit the resources of the school district on behalf of that child if it's something outside of the regular purview uh, of a regular meeting. And the reason that I don't make a big deal about having a principal be an LEA is if the parent isn't asking for something out of the ordinary or anything additional, then I don't care. You know, that, that LEA aspect isn't really important until you're asking for additional services that require somebody's approval. So if you're asking for, let's say, private ABA, ABA therapy, or you're asking for monetary reimbursement for transportation because they won't provide uh, bus transportation, those are additional resources, you see, and that's something that the IEP team can't necessarily commit to. It would be the LEA. Now, who is typically the LEA? The special education director, because the special education director controls a special education budget. And in, frankly, in schools, there should be, the hierarchy should be superintendent, special ed director, and then principals. Because of the sheer amount of money that the special education director controls. Typically, it's not like that. And that's why we have a lot of these problems in special education. Because the hierarchy is typically superintendent, principals, and then somewhere way out here in nowhere land and disrespect land is you'll find your special education director. And what that does is it sets the tone for the principals to sit there and, and ignore uh, the recommendations or the decisions of the special education director. Not only that is many principals will make the huge mistake of trying to cause division um, between or, or start a turf war uh, meaning that you're you you're a special educator in my school district, or you're a paraprofessional in my school, in my particular school. So therefore, your loyalty is to me. You listen to me first. You don't listen to the administrator above me. Got a lot of problems because of that. Okay. So the hierarchy should be superintendent, special ed director, and then principals. 
you'll see less problems in special education if it was done that way. But in your particular situation, can one of the other two hats, meaning the general education teacher and the special education teacher, act as the LEA? Yes, they can. If the special ed director gives this, let's say the special education teacher, the added authority to commit the resources, and they then at that point, then they can wear both hats. It's a rare situation, but there are times to where your LEA can be your special education teacher. But they need to sort of let you know in advance. So you say sort of need to let you know that, hey, I'm not only the special education hat, but I'm also the LEA hat. And then there needs to be that general education hat. Now, can it be that the general education person can act as the LEA? Yes, that can happen too. But they need to designate. And it needs to be legit, meaning that if you're asking for something additional, this person can't go, hey, let me let me go call so-and-so. No, then you didn't really, you weren't really designated as the LEA. That's not how that works. So yes, it would be a compliant IEP if this person said that they were the LEA, but yet they signed as, you know, they should have signed in both spots and made it very clear that they were wearing both hats. And they should have explained that enough to you so that you would understand that that is allowed. Um, and, you know, I would hope that it would be allowed in rare situations, not all the time, um, so that there's a, a clear and concise sort of separation of roles. All right. Um, I mean, it's just, it's just like our government, we have separations of power. And, and on the IEP team, that's why we have a team. Each one has something to bring to the table with regards to expertise. Occupational therapist, speech language pathologist, behaviorist, meaning BCBAs, board certified behavior analyst, um, physical therapists if they're needed, uh, general education teachers, special education teachers, and then that administrative head that understands what's going on in your community and can commit the resources for your child. Uh, I hope that answered your question, but if, if, if you end up digging that this person, you really didn't have an LEA and this person was just providing a smoke screen uh, or covering for the LEA, then at that point, eh, you didn't have a compliant meeting. I'm not gonna say you know your IEP is not legal, uh, that's a completely different analysis, even if you don't have the, the right number of people there. The, there would have to be some additional thought that goes into um, whether your child is progressing. Now, if your child's staying stagnant or regressing, then it's, it would be very easy for you to pinpoint and say, it was this meeting where this crappy IEP was developed and the, the number of people weren't there. And if that's your, your, your mark, then yes, absolutely it would be a violation and it would be a substantive one, meaning that your child was being harmed because of it. 